Yes. All right. They were recommended to me. So, so that's a, the 12, 12 volt one. It takes a little batteries, doesn't it? That's right. There it is. That's, that, was, that was an impressive way to open it. That's, that's the way I would do stuff. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, we're down here at the development block. I think my microphone has died, so um, yeah, the audio is going to be not quite as good at the minute until I get that sorted, but apologies for that. We've got Josiah and Johnny. Johnny's disappeared. He's a magician. There he is. <laughs> so we're here with the rock picker, and I think the last we saw of the rock picker was we had an issue with the back wheel where it actually came off. Um, that's sort of been temporarily attached, but needs more work done to it um, to get it right. Uh, but yeah, we just got to wait for um, the right labour and the right materials to be able to do that. Uh, but what we are doing is going to go through it and fix all the damage that Josiah has been doing to it for the last how many hundred hours? About 700 or so. <laughs> so it could have, yeah, we don't know how many hours it's done, but it could be 700, somewhere like that. Um, but we do have a fairly good crack up there on the pivot um, where the pin goes through so we're going to have to die grind all that out and then re-weld that. Um, we've got some belts that are just getting replaced at the minute and we have already fixed up a magnet that fell off for a sensor and then basically give it a good good once over. So that's um that's the story but right now I'm actually going to go back up to the main farm to get some of the tools we're not set up down here properly and the work trail that's usually here is actually at the, where the dozers are so we don't really have all the tools we need to do the job um, but anyway I'm going to fly back up grab what we need and come back well we've been up and got all the bits we need hopefully um, but what I'm about to do is fix up some of these cracks so the lighting is not very good, but you can see there, I've already started veing it out here so I can get a good weld in there. Um, and yeah, I think it's about time for a time lapse. Right, we've got one of them done. Now, not very pretty, but it should be good enough for what we want to do. Um, if I guess if I put enough thick coats of paint on it, you won't be able to see all the imperfections. So that's what I'll have to do. Um, but yeah, so using low hydrogen rods, which are a bit of a pain. Um, well, and I'm not very good at it, but um, yeah, it just makes things a little bit more tricky. But we don't have a MIG here and I am certainly better at least than with a MIG than a stick but hopefully that should come up all right. I've just got to do the other side and then I've got to fix that crack up in there. So I think Josiah's been replacing some of the tines in here um, and yeah there's a few other bits to do with the uni joints that have been done, uh, been done and there's some bearing issues I think. We'll have a bit of a have a bit of a look. Johnny's been pulling the front end apart here. So yeah, I think there's a there's a idler shaft that was in here for the um, PDO shafts was um or the carrier shaft. Oh, I don't know what you call it, but yeah, it was all bent. Um, and yeah, there's some bearing issues elsewhere. So anyway, slowly getting through all the jobs. Looking busy there, Josiah. Trying to. 
Is that your belt tension, is it? Belt tension, yeah. Yeah, good. Righto, well, I, uh, I've been done my very best to try and stay away from working on this thing, because otherwise then you become an expert at it, and then you always have to fix it, so hopefully I can keep away after this. So, I just got Josiah, he's going to let this down, um, so I can try and V out a bit more of it. But I think now it must that, that shaft must go all the way through and then there's a bush on the inside on each end. So I think that's what's happening there. So I'm not sure why it's cracked, but anyway, got to weld it up somehow. It's moving. Try to get that straight, it's going to be a tricky, tricky endeavour. Oh, that closed it all up pretty nicely actually, so I should be able to weld that and see how we go. Mm. I think we're done for the day at least. Um, there's a couple of bits that need to be taken back up to the main farm and worked on and then yeah maybe Joseph will come down tomorrow and just fit them but we've got the back bit there welded up. Um, it seemed to go okay. I've um, got the plates there just need a coat of paint on them. Um, new belts are on here and yeah I think we're just going through I think one of the unis might be a bit sad too but um, anyway, it's all all looking fairly good, so it's all ready to ready to go on its next adventure. Um, so a couple of people have asked, um, well, I've seen this in the background and that, and asked about it. Um, now there's basically two main rock pickers you can get here in Australia. There's this one and one that's called an Elho. Um, we actually did have the other one, they're a yellow one, um, come and do some work. we like we hired it out and. They did some work at the main farm and yeah it seemed to do a good job that's a hydraulic or hydraulically driven one and the issue was with that is even when we were watching it work and that because we weren't driving it but we we're there around it it would always stall out from the hydraulic the, the hydraulics just didn't have enough um, power and it kept stalling out the drum and and these wings um, the other thing is is this here you only need about 100 120 horsepower tractor um, whereas the other ones with the hydraulics you need a lot of hydraulic capacity so then you all, all of a sudden you need like a 200 horsepower tractor um, or more and we didn't have a spare tractor so we would have had to buy another tractor which would have been another lot of money um, but we've actually been reasonably pleased with the mechanical side of this um, you've got your main drive belts obviously they can slip if there's an issue um, or whatever like you've got gearboxes but it's all there's been a few things that we've had to um, fiddle with and fix um, on the way um, there was a couple of issues with uni joints where they weren't heavy duty enough uh, i think they're only like 80 horsepower rated um, uh, pdo shafts i should say um, but yeah they've been upgraded and yeah a few things like that but yeah it just seems to do a d decent job of flicking the rocks up with the wind rowers here um, and yeah, just with the spring tines in the back here seems to work quite nicely too. Whereas on the other 
brand of rock picker. Um, they're just big solid arms mounted on rubber, which there isn't quite as much give. So you do break these tines a bit, but it's um, yeah, just a lot more gentle. Um, and yeah, the other ones, if they bend a little bit, they hit other things in there. And yeah, it was just from what we witnessed it. Um, yeah, they're a good good rock picker, but it just if you had a spare. 200 horsepower tractor um, it would be fine but we were wanting to use this um, with the Deutz which is what we had at the time yeah, that was one of the main reasons so yeah and like with mechanical stuff you, it's a bit cheaper to fix um, probably more likely to to break down in some ways but maybe a little bit more maintenance intensive but um, yeah you don't have hydraulic motors and all that sort of stuff to deal with so anyway um, that's just a brief um, yeah, that's what we've found. Um, this one I think may not lift quite as high, but I think it's got a bigger capacity so it can hold more tons. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I haven't used this, I haven't had a lot to do with it, so I might be a bit hazy on the details. But anyway, it's done a lot of work, um, and yeah, it has a few things have happened to it, but. It's, um, yeah, it's, the job it does is amazing. So really, really happy with the job that's been done. Well, guys, we were going to do some weed editing today, but um, yeah, we had a, oh, it was only a little bit of rain, not much, but um, yeah, the wind stuck around. So it's actually just, we're in a bit of a calm spot now. So it's not absolutely blowing, but yeah, it's, it was way too windy to, to weed it. So we're um, here doing a little bit of tidy up in the shed, which is very long overdue. Um, we're not probably gonna get a lot done, but um, yeah, we're just, it has, it's just stopped raining basically. We haven't had rain for a few weeks now, or decent rain, and um, they're usually our days where we get a few things tidied up. What I am doing now is this quad sprayer, um, we've had for quite a few years now, it's been a really good thing, but the boom that was on the back, um, this is it here, and it just not quite, I don't know whether it's a design thing or what, but um, just what was happening is basically if you can imagine that that sits that that's where it bolts on so that sits up a bit um, and yeah these are the booms that fold around but that was all that's basically supporting it is that little bit there and this here so you can see we've welded over and over again basically every time you use it you know it's it's flopping up and down the boom so it, it, it fatigues and breaks and yeah it's just been a bit of a bit of a pain so finally, um, we've upgraded to a different type of boom. Now this, this type is yeah, a lot more sturdy, it would seem. So there's a lot more um, angle there. So uh, like distance between the two pivots there. So it's not, it shouldn't, yeah, shouldn't at all be quite as wobbly. So that will save on a bit of fatigue. So what I've got to do is I've got to swap some bits over from that one to this one. It's got all the basics, but I'm going to put some taps in so we can um, either have left, middle, or uh, sorry, right, middle, or left sections on, whichever, whatever we want to do. Um, I've got to finish plumbing it up. We've got this is all we got here, so I've got to yeah figure that one out. And I'll also probably make a bracket where this can sit here um, without rubbing on this pipe. So uh, anyway, there's a couple things couple things to do um, but I'll get into it.
after a few interruptions, we've finally got, um, yeah, this sorted, I think, with the things I wanted to do. So I've just got a little bracket in there, so that stops that from rubbing there um, when you're going along. Um, so I've plumbed it all in. I've, I haven't tidied it off yet. I just want to make sure everything works, and um, we may want to move these fence line nozzles somewhere else. So I left a bit of extra um, pipe on that. And I think, I think we might go and just give it a try, see... See if it does what we want to do. Well, we've got Brad in his natural habitat over there. We've got Dad in his natural habitat buying cordless tools. Is that your new one, is it? Uh, well, see that? That's what happened when I used a pop rivet gun. And because as I get older, I lost my strength. So anyway, I took a big chunk out there. So, so you treated yourself. I thought, well, You'll get better value out of me <laughs> if I look after. If you're not getting hurt. So I can do these, let's do these little jobs that nobody else wants to do. <laughs> so oh. They were recommended to me, so. So that's the, the 12, 12 volt one, it takes a little batteries, doesn't it? <laughs> that's right, there it is. That's, that, was, that was an impressive way to open it. <laughs> that's, that's the way I do stuff. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh. So how do you, oh you got your different ends down there. Yep. And you just go. I don't think it's like that. It's not that quick. <laughs> no, well that's good. Well, you, I'm just about to drive this off, so you got, you put your rubbish all over it. We'll do what we got to do. them out like so that should be on there so that boom section should work I will have to get some taps that go on just the hose here because um, yeah those fittings there I can't really modify to fit a tap so um, yeah that way we can just have the two nozzles in the middle get middle going and the fence line nozzles if we don't want our booms out and we're just yeah doing different things so anyway let's see with the switch here. That's off. On. That's working pretty good. All right, so we'll put our fence line nozzles on. Again, I don't have those other taps to turn the end booms off, but Not parking in the right spot, really, have I? They just need to check how sturdy they are. Well, that's a lot better than the other ones. I'll line up that rock again. Yeah. That is a lot better. I think they should last a lot longer. So let's try these fence line nozzles again. That one needs a bit of work. Yeah. 
and that's not too bad. Well guys, it is knockoff time for the day and that's exactly what I'm about to do. Um, we did quickly just get the row gator up here and um, we have been having an issue where the outer um, left um, tip section control, which is actually this um, solenoid here, or actuator, technically, um, and yeah, we're not sure exactly what's going on. It just randomly just shuts off and we're not sure if it's actually the computer telling it to shut off or whether there's a um, broken wire somewhere but anyway because we're just it's pretty difficult to track down because it only plays up every now and then um, I've just ran a new quickly half dodgily but hopefully it's not a permanent thing um, just a cable that runs through there's four wires so I've run that all the way along the boom um, and up all the way to bypass the boom harness and the center harness here and it goes up to the um, yeah a plug up there so that way if we don't have any more issues with it um, then we know that it's this harness here which we can either buy a new one or yeah anyway we'll know more at least anyway so that's just quickly what we've um, done this afternoon but yeah I'm gonna probably leave it there for the video um, just again remember to hit the like button if you do enjoy the videos um, it's the best way to support the channel and uh, comment if you have any questions and all of that. Um, I do, again, I have said it a few times, but I pretty much do read every single comment um, or glance at them at, at the very least. Um, and if I'd, I'd really try my best, I can't always get to all of them, but I try my best to answer any genuine questions. Um, so, yeah, just hit us up with any questions. Um, and, yeah, we, do, we are on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, so check them out. There's links in the description. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one.